Today, the church celebrates the beautiful feast of the presentation of Our Lady in the temple. Though perhaps one of the lesser well-known feasts of Our Lady, it nonetheless offers a particular insight into the wonderful plan of salvation which God promised in the Proto-Evangelium of Genesis. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. She shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Here we see the pivotal role Our Lady plays in salvation history and the way in which God prepared her to become the mother of God, not only through her immaculate conception, but also through her parents, Saints Anne and Joachim, and the temple attendants. Not to be confused with the presentation of Our Lord, which commemorates the purification of Our Lady and the presentation of Our Lord in the temple, today's feast, the presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary, is part of a long-held tradition going back at least as far as St. Gregory of Nyssa and very probably to the very early church. According to this tradition, Our Lady's father, St. Joachim, had reached old age but was yet without children, so his wife, St. Anne, went to the temple in Jerusalem to ask God to give her a child. In return, she would consecrate this child to God's service at the appropriate age. Shortly thereafter, St. Anne conceived and gave birth to a daughter whom she named Mary, which means, very appropriately, wished for child or beloved. At the age of three, Saints Joachim and Anne presented Our Lady to the temple priests as a child to be consecrated to God, to be raised in the service of the temple in the attached apartments, just as Samuel was presented by his mother Hannah to be raised for the same reason. When Our Lady had reached maturity, the priest of the temple sought a way in which she might continue her consecration to God in accord with the customs of the Jewish people. While deliberating what they should do, the priest received a message from God that they should betroth her to a worthy man who would guard her virginity as a holy protector. The priest chose St. Joseph not only because he was both a descendant of King David as well as a member of the same tribe and family of Our Lady, but also because he was a man already wholly dedicated to the Lord. In this way, we can understand Our Lady's surprise when the angel Gabriel announced to her that she would become the mother of the Messiah. How shall this be done, since I know not a man? Our Lady, unlike uh, her cousin-in-law, did not doubt the message of the angel but merely wondered at how she might continue to maintain her vow to the Lord and yet also become a mother. Now we know from that great passage from St. Luke where the angel Gabriel tells her that she will conceive and bear a child in her womb and that child shall be named Jesus. We will, of course, celebrate the great solemnity of the birth of our Lord and that birth announced first and prepared for before she was even born. Our Lady. And so God from all time and from, all, from the very beginning set in motion those acts and those plans which would bring about our salvation from that moment in which our par first parents fell, from that moment to which our Lord would die on the cross for us, raising up the sacraments, that most important sacrament of baptism, by which we become children in grace of God the Father, brothers and sons, brothers and, and sisters of our Lord. And of course, by the great grace given to St. John on the cross by our Lord, to have Mary, our mother, as not only the mother of God, but our mother, our mother in grace.